<laughs> All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to yet another match preview. Chelsea versus West Ham is upon us. This is a huge game, ladies and gentlemen, a huge, huge game. Look, not only the fact that we are in contention to make it into Europe, we have we still have that opportunity alive. I know a lot of people don't want to talk about this. I know a lot of people are a little bit skeptical about it. But the fact of the matter is that Europe is still alive for us. Europa League, that is. Um, and also Conference League. I know a lot of people don't want Conference League. But for me, to be honest, any level of Europe is very important for this particular squad to get a little bit more game time next season. But of course... Europa League is the most important one of them. And let's not forget West Ham. They beat us earlier this season in a quite an embarrassing fashion, if I'm being absolutely honest. And I, I would like to get the revenge uh, on them at Stamford Bridge, where our record in recent times has actually been very, very good. Um, I think we've had quite a lot of wins in recent times and not, not too many losses. Maybe one loss in the last maybe 10 or 12 games, something like that. There is a stat that's going around. But... Ladies and gentlemen, this is a dangerous game. And I think Maurizio Pochettino, he's mentioned this in the press conference as well, that generally it's these type of games where we've come off a very, very good win is when we go to the next game and we kind of falter. We have no room for error. Newcastle earlier on today ended up smashing Burnley 4-1, I believe, away from home. We need to hope Newcastle and Manchester United, they drop points there in front of us. We need to be able to take over them. But they've picked up their three points. We need to go and do our job and make sure we're in the race and pick up these three points against West Ham. West Ham's a particular team at the moment. We're going to go through some West Ham uh, news on social media. They're going through a very strange situation, West Ham, where they're looking to, they're, they're well and truly looking to replace David Moyes. David Moyes, this will be his last season. So we might have them at a situation where. Some of their players, I don't know how they might feel mentally, knowing that this manager is not going to be around. They are looking for a new manager. Are they looking to give up right now? Who knows? Who knows? But this is yet another London derby. So you got to expect that it's going to be a huge game. It's generally against West Ham. We dominate the ball, but we get done by them through physicality, through counterattacks, Uh Antonio up front is always a menace against us. He just he does jack all all season, but he'll show up against Chelsea undoubtedly. They've got Kudus, who's a very very good player, um, and they've got they've got other potent players in and around them. Bowen being one of them. Obviously, quite a few uh, Chelsea players. There's Zuma, Emerson. Um, I'm pretty sure they'll be they'll be motivated to come to Chelsea at Stamford Bridge and putting on a performance. So look, let's have a quick look at West Ham's form before we have a look at some of the news um, that's circulating around. Obviously, we've got Chelsea versus West Ham coming up at Stamford Bridge. Prior to that, West Ham had a two-all draw against Liverpool. Liverpool, they're in a very funny situation. So how much we want to take out take out of that match? Not sure, but if you look at previously, Crystal Palace absolutely creamed all over West Ham. West Ham lost against Leverkusen in the uh, Europa League. Fulham beat them recently 2-0. Uh, obviously, Leverkusen beat them 2-0 uh, at, at uh, Leverkusen's home ground. Leverkusen obviously flying. And prior to that, that was their last win, 2-1 against Wolves. And before that, it was 1-1. So look, a very, very indifferent Form, you'd have to say West Ham right now, not in the best of form. And if you look at Chelsea, we'll, we'll go through Chelsea's form very, very soon. Uh, this is a match between eighth versus ninth. Let's have a quick look at Chelsea's uh, form guide in recent times. 2 0 victory against Tottenham, 2 2 against Aston Villa, where we should have won. To be honest, this is where the whole change started to happen, where Kukure started to invert in and 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 from the second half onwards against Aston Villa started to look good, obviously looked really good against Tottenham. Once again, I reiterate, we should have beaten Aston Villa. Nonetheless, prior to that 5-0 loss against Arsenal, that was a shocker, absolute shocker. 1-0, we should have beaten Manchester City. We should have beaten. And then prior to that, 6-0 against Everton. And then the 2 all 4-3. So look, overall, our form, once again, up and down, but I think... I think we might have just hit a sweet spot right now where I feel we should be able to 
kick on from here and hopefully win the rest of the games. Look, it's not something that has been done all throughout this season. We've not shown resilience. We've not shown any level of form where it tells us that we can go on and win the remaining matches. But <laughs> I'm just hoping and believing that that's the case. Now, let's check out some news, ladies and gentlemen. This is the latest news that's come out on Twitter. X west Ham employee via the byline is saying... One of my Chelsea sources who used to help me with information when I was working on Chelsea News told me that Pochettino's relationship with owners is massively strained. Now, look, I don't know, man. These people, they come up with these news, no problems. And there could be some truth around it. For me, there were so many moments all throughout the season to let go of Pochettino, and we didn't do that. And I just get this vibe. I know financially maybe we might have been a little bit restricted in getting rid of Pochettino. With the financial fair play, we didn't want to incur more expenses and get a new manager and pay for the new manager as well. But I just get the feeling our owners, I don't think they're too too concerned about Pochettino. I know Pochettino has come out recently in the press conference saying that he's not spoken to the owners in a couple of, couple of months. Um, and now we're hearing this. Uh, I don't know, man. Honestly, I think the players like him. Think the sporting director is someone like him as somewhat like him as well and they're planning for next season and when you look at the managerial market at the moment it's not that great every other manager is staying put and staying in their respective club besides probably uh, Ruben Amarim is the only name that's out there that you know there could be some potential movement from Ruben Amarim but besides that Honestly, I still think it's probably going to be Chelsea manager for next season. Now, some West Ham news. As I said, ladies and gentlemen, there's um, there's some talks that David Moyes is going to move on. The friction between Steen and Moyes has been witnessed by some West Ham players. Um, I think Steen, what is he? Is he, is he an owner? Is he a CEO, president or something of West Ham? Um Looks like they're going to move on from David Moyes. And there's there's a whole heap of news about this particular matter. Um, there you go. Julian Lepetegui was in advanced talks with AC Milan, but the deal was never sealed or signed. He was shocked as the board decided to leave the negotiations because the fans reacted in a very negative way to the news. So they are looking for a manager. This is coming from Fabrizio Romano. And it'll be interesting to see how the players, um, you know, they, they respond to David Moyes in these last few matches of the season. So hopefully we have caught them at a very, very good moment. Before we go into the news, look, I'm not going to do a team selection. There is still quite a lot of injuries that's uh, that's circulating around Chelsea Football Club. I think players like Nkunku and Levi Colwell, they're going to be back maybe in the bench, and that, that'll, that'll be a massive boost for us. If we can even get some minutes from them to help us out right at the end of the game, that'll go a long way. For me, it'll be status quo. Pretty much the team that we selected uh, against Spurs will have to play again. I know short turnaround, but we don't really have much of, much of an option. So I'd, I'd keep the same team, and let's see how the team fares. Again, another big London derby. Look, my... My thing is, I, I, I believe we can win. Honestly, I believe we can win this game and I believe we can win the remaining few fixtures and I believe we can make it into Europa League um, come at the end of the season. And we're going to have to. We need it. We need some level of Europe badly next season. And look, inadvertently, that would mean that Maurizio Pochettino probably stays for next season. For me, I'm more concerned about the future of the club uh, and the future of the club needs European level of football. So um, we can deal with the whole Pochettino thing at the end of the season. And, and look, if he does end up staying next season, we can at least give him till November, December to see exactly how the team's going. And if the team's not doing well, I think a decision needs to be made um, at, at that point. But for the time being, look... I fully believe we can beat West Ham. I'm going with a score prediction of, once again, 2-0. Another 2-0 victory. Let me know your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, on the score prediction. And um, what would you do with the team? Let me know your thoughts. Me, personally, I'm keeping the same team. Now, some Chelsea news, ladies and gentlemen. Some big, big Chelsea news that's happening. One of the biggest ones is Omari Hutchinson. Kudos to him. Ipswich have, have been promoted to the Premier League. They've you know secured the second position. 
Obviously, we know Leicester has um, won the championship and they have been promoted. Um, oh, whether they've won, I don't know. They're definitely promoted. They're confirmed to go to the Premier League, of course. And uh, Ipswich is 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 confirmed to go to the Premier League with them being second at the moment. Whether Leicester's won the championship, I'm not sure as yet. Maybe they have. Um, but nonetheless, Omari Hutchinson played a huge, huge part in helping Ipswich gain promotion. Yet another man of the match, yet another goal. Look, maybe, what, a month, a couple of months ago, I was saying that I still think Angela Gabriel, for me, has an all-round package from that right side. I'm starting to feel that Omari Hutchinson, he's growing in an exponential fashion. And you would, you definitely need to consider him for next season, at least in the preseason. There's there's immense competition there. Madueke, hopefully he can finish off the season the way the way he's carrying on in the last couple of matches um, and show that he's he's got that ability to lock down that right side. Omari Hutchinson, he can pretty much play anywhere in that front three, to be honest. Well, preferably on the right side, right wing or left wing. Uh, he's scoring goals. He's dribbling well. He's taking on his man. Um, he's getting man of the match performances. So Omari Hutchinson definitely needs to be considered. Angela Gabriel, obviously his season has fizzled out due to the injury. So look, Omari Hutchinson, this is what he had to say post-match today. Omari Hutchinson tells Sky he wants to return to Ipswich next season, having been sent on loan from Chelsea. I hope so. We'll see my agent and the manager says, uh, and what the manager says, I'm speechless coming to this team. I don't know what to say. It's the best loan I could have ever imagined. He wants to... He wants to go back to Ipswich. So yet another, you know, we've recently had manager coming out, managers coming out and saying how they want to stay. We've now had a player saying that he'd want to he'd want to go back to Ipswich, um, you know, knowing that Ipswich has been promoted. To, to be honest, look, if we are unable to provide Hutchinson minutes next season, and it all depends if we make it to Europe or not. If we make it to Europe, I think someone like Hutchinson would be very, very handy um, for Chelsea Football Club. And he will definitely get minutes. But if we are unable to give him minutes for some reason, it would be nice to see him go back to Ipswich on another loan and get that Premier League experience under his belt. And hopefully he can do well and shine. And the season after, he can really come and warrant a place at Chelsea Football Club. So, look, very, very happy with Omari Hutchinson's development. And, um, yeah, this is this has been a fantastic loan spell. And... Look, a player that we need to look out for. 100% a player we need to look out for. Omari Hutchinson, yet another man of the match. Quite a few men of the matches uh, this season from Omari Hutchinson. Omari Hutchinson left Arsenal for Chelsea in search of more games this uh, uh, game time this summer before going on loan to Championship to develop. The youngster has registered 15 goals, uh, goal contribution this season, firing Ipswich to the Premier League for the first time in 22 years. He's actually played a big role, huge role. Omari Hutchinson in in getting you know a promotion for Ipswich, um, so very very happy with Omari Hutchinson. Omari Hutchinson's debut season in professional football: fifty appearances, twenty five starts, two thousand five hundred sixty two minutes. So that's this is where this is where he's done better than Angela Gabriel. Angela Gabriel obviously hasn't registered that amount of minutes. Omari Hutchinson has been, and he has absolutely taken full advantage of it and developed, immensely developed. 11 goals, 6 assists, one times championship player of the team. Um, wow, player of the team. That's Oh, yeah, okay, player of the month, sorry, one time. So that's pretty good. Three times Ipswich player of the month uh, and promotion secured as well. That's fantastic news in regards to Omari Hutchinson. Lots of talk that's happening with Omari Hutchinson and Mikhail Mudrik. We're going to go to Mikhail Mudrik's stuff very, very soon. A large part of the fan base are quite annoyed that a player like Omari Hutchinson has been let go on a loan and we're stuck with Mikhail Mudrik. But look, Hutchinson needed to go at that point and needed to develop and put on this sort of statement with Mudrik. Look, a lot of us didn't know much about Mudrik. A lot of us wanted Mudrik. A lot of us thought he is going to be the next big thing. Um, it just hasn't worked out in that manner. Callum and is the next news, ladies and gentlemen. He's killing it in recent times as well, man. Callum and a um, couple of really good goals earlier today, man, for Nottingham Forest. And he's also directly involved in 
ensuring Nottingham Forest stays afloat in the Premier League. So check this out from Henry Winter. Callum Antonodoy for a reported 3 million plus 2 million add-ons. Murillo for a reported 15 million. Matt Sells for 5 million. Been a lot of focus on Nottingham Forest FC spending, but these three, all of them praised by fans for performances. Sheffield United, um, Nottingham Forest proving absolute bargains. Huge win today. Huge 24 hours. Callum Antonodoy has his second for Nottingham Forest in similar fashion to his first year, both the goals from that left side, cutting in and then slot, slotting that shot in uh, on that uh, far right-hand side of the goalkeeper. Um, he's been very good. He's been very good. He he dribbles into the box, cuts inside on his right foot and fires a low finish into the bottom corner. Um, fantastic bit of play from Callum Antonodoy. Callum Antonodoy has scored more Premier League goals, more than all of Chelsea's attacking wide or midfield players, except Cole Palmer and Nicholas Jackson. Three million, what a gift from Chelsea to Nottingham Forest. Look, once again, as I said, people talking about Omari Hutchinson, comparing him to Mikela Mudrik and what a flop Mudrik has been. And let's be honest, he has been a bit of a flop. Um, and then people are doing the same thing with Kalamut and and comparing him with Mudrik once again. And as you saw, Kalamut and has got more goals than any of our attackers besides Cole Palmer and Nicholas Jackson. Look, all I'm going to say is that let's not forget. Let's not forget where Kalamut and was prior to this season. You know, he had a flop season at Bayer Leverkusen. He was flopping at Chelsea. He just wasn't looking good. A lot of people say, but you have to stay patient. You have to look. We were patient enough. We were patient for long enough. He probably needed a change and good on him for getting that change at Nottingham Forest and doing well. And right now, there's no point in sitting here and, and reminiscing and doing the revisionism right now and, and, and trying to make a point. Look, the fact is, he's at a good space. He needed the change. We needed to move on. And it is what it is. Yeah, it's not worked out for us with Mudrik, but... Um, yeah, I don't need Callum Atunadoy to come back to Chelsea Football Club, bottom line. He's good where he is. We have Omari Hutchinson that we can focus on. And, and this is something that needs to be talked about next season. You know, what do you do with Mikhail Modric? Mikhail Modric, to be honest, in the last game, he actually wasn't that bad. Obviously, still uh, quite a lot of things that he needs to polish. There's no doubts about that. But, yeah, there is talent in Mudrik. There is talent. But is do we have enough time to harness that talent? I don't know. We could potentially fall into the same trap with how, how Callum Antonodoy is doing right now, letting go of Mudrik and he blows up somewhere else. Look, me personally, I'd be looking into sending Mudrik on a loan or a, or a sell even. Like, is this guy going to turn out to be the player that we want him to be? I'm not, I'm not really sure. He may, but I'm not sure. Right now, we do need an upgrade on the left. So I can't be going into next season with this same attack. Bar Jackson and Palmer can't be going into the you know next season with the same attack and hoping that a miracle happens. So look, lots of talk in social media in regards to Mudrik. As you can see, we shipped him off to employ Mudrik. Uh, what Mudrik needs to improve most to bring his game together is his first touch and ball control. A lot of people talking about Mikel Mudrik. Chelsea fans getting ready to compare Hudson Odoi to Mudrik every time he scores. Um, uh, Alex Goldberg is the one, uh, one of the you know fans that's driving this. Hudson Odoi's goal was beautiful. Damn, I'd swap him for Mudrik in a heartbeat. Um, Asad Ali backing Mudrik over here. Chelsea fans are always comparing Rice to Kaisido and Mudrik to Cho. Why do Chelsea fans support players for other clubs more than our own? It's true. Look, I hate comparing, man. Honestly, I absolutely hate comparing. And uh, I see a lot of that. Declan Rice, people still ride about Declan Rice, which is crazy. And now, obviously, with Callum and Tenedoy. Do that with our own players, man. Like, players that are on loan. Don't worry about players that are playing for other clubs, man. Who cares about that? But, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. I should definitely, inshallah, by God willing, we will be there for the West Ham. Chelsea versus West Ham. Watch along. Make sure you're there. Until then, everyone, take care. See ya.